From terrible designs to underpowered offerings and those that will likely be your coffin. These are the ships that should either be a hard pass or give your purchase pause. Welcome immortals, I'm Vici Deum, here to go over the top 5 worst Star Citizen ships. And a special thank you to my channel members, your support really helps me create this content. And we're starting right now. Number 5. C8 Pisces The runabout bundled alongside the base Carrick, the C8 Pisces is the worst variant in the lineup, losing twin size 1 pilot weapons over its C8X counterpart and intended to not even come with a jump drive as standard equipment. This ship is simply a worse version all around. The C8 Pisces isn't purchasable as standalone, but it comes bundled with the least expensive Carrick, and any prospective player who has one should strongly consider the $20 Carrick with C8X Pisces or just to pick up the C8X or C8R as an in-game purchase and exchange their C8 Pisces going forward. For its underpowered performance and much better alternatives, the C8 Pisces is number 5. Number 4. Terrapin A deep space armored, scout ship outfitted with long range scanners and intended for extended reconnaissance and patrol missions. This tanky turtle sounds great on paper and looks fantastic atop it. And while I would love to give this ship my recommendation, I instead have to caution any player interested in its purchase. While the Terrapin is cool looking, in reality it barely lives up to its nameplate, since armor isn't current currently implemented, shield strength is the prevailing stat that determines your survivability. Towards that, its twin size 2 shields don't put up much resistance, and it struggles against tough targets or swarms of enemies. Further, its twin size 2 pilot weapons and lack of either missiles or turret guns prolongs fights and endangers this ship further. And lacking any robust scanning gameplay, the Terrapin falls short of its primary selling feature. At its 220 $20 price point, players would be much better served with any number of alternatives. For these reasons and more, the Terrapin is number 4. Number 3. Valkyrie, a heavy dropship designed to safely deploy up to 20 armed troops into deadly combat zones. Sounds like a formidable platform that would be quite useful in the verse. Sadly, the Valkyrie falls into the same predicament as the Terrapin. Lacking proper ship armor, the Valkyrie needs to rely on its twin size 2 shields as well, which won't end up protecting its payload for very long. And while this ship has much more pilot and turret firepower, it lacks lacks the longevity to sustain that, and ends up struggling against tougher bounty targets, especially when forced into atmospheric fights, where its heavy steering and poor acceleration make escaping a dangerous situation and fruitless effort. And at $375, this ship severely disappoints, at least in the current state of the game. For these reasons, the Valkyrie is number 3. Number 2. Starfarer, a refueling platform that doubles as a fuel transport and mobile refinery. The Starfarer serves a larger purpose in the verse by supplying stranded captains with the fuel they desperately need to make it safely back home. But this ship was one of the first designed and severely falls short of recent releases, with a cluttered and difficult to navigate interior that showcases just how far CIG really has come in their shipbuilding pipeline. It's been continuously restated by CIG's own employees to be the worst ship designed for the game. But if you haven't had the chance to see it firsthand, you won't be able to truly appreciate just how bad it is. For these reasons, the Starfarer is number two. Number 1. Cutlass Steel Specced to be equal parts gunship and dropship, the Cutlass Steel adds an additional turret, more missiles, 5 door-mounted Gatling guns, and 18 jump seats for armed and armored passengers. Designed to rapidly insert troops into an area and provide fire support for them to quickly extricate into any hot LZ, but this description belies its true purpose, the game's most efficient coffin. because 
protecting that crew of two dozen is a single size 2 shield. And while its payload may be heavily armored, the cutlass steel is anything but. So even after armor is properly introduced, this ship doesn't have the saving grace like others on this list, and simply falls flat in every possible way. Adding insult to injury is its $235 price tag, which positions this ship for absolutely no one besides the most ardent Drake fanboy, as there are countless better alternatives for virtually any situation. For these reasons, the Cutlass Steel is number one. But what ships do you think are the worst in the game? I've had a chance to fly every ship in the verse and consistently find myself avoiding these choices. Although I really want the Terrapin and Valkyrie in particular to get their time to shine, and hope the introduction of Master Modes and the inclusion of ship armor helps turn them around. But which ships do you think I should have included? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you liked this video, here's another I think you'd enjoy. Or if you want to watch more of these videos, here's the playlist. Either way, thank you, and I look forward to seeing all of you out there in the verse.